One of the most important types of reactions that alcohols can undergo uh, is oxidation. Okay, so to put it in sort of generic terms, what the oxidation of an alcohol would look like uh, is the following process where uh, basically we're going to lose um, a molecule of hydrogen from the alcohol. So it's going to be the proton on the oxygen and then an adjacent uh, hydride from that carbon. Okay, so oxidation would then go to produce a carbonyl. Okay, so carbonyl. And then uh, formally, um, that's going to be a molecule of H2, although uh, the exact reagents are going to give us um, a different byproduct. So that's oxidation, and then the, re the opposite of that is reduction. So we're reducing going from here to there and oxidizing going from alcohol to, to carbonyl. So we'll deal with uh, reduction um, in another video, but here we're talking about the process of oxidation, um, which is one of the most important things that uh, alcohols will do in terms of reactions. So it's useful to talk about uh, the, the types of oxidations in terms of categories. So first, for primary alcohols, okay, we so here's here's a primary alcohol, and if we oxidize uh, once, okay, and and sometimes we write oxidation generically as a as an O in brackets. That just means that there's an oxidation. If we oxidize once, we will get to this type of carbonyl, which is an aldehyde. Okay. So an aldehyde, so it's a carbonyl with one organic substituent and then another um, hydrogen substituent. Now in this case, it is actually possible <clears throat> to oxidize a second time, okay? So we can oxidize the aldehyde and go up to a higher oxidation state, which might be uh, something like a carboxylic acid. Um, and there are other species at that oxidation state, but, but we'll keep it simple here. Okay, so primary alcohols, uh, can be oxidized twice, and that's because they have two different uh, hydrogens in that in that position on the carbon. So secondary alcohols, okay, here's a secondary alcohol. These can only undergo one oxidation, right, because there's only that one um, uh, hydrogen uh, on, on that carbon uh, where that hydroxyl is. So these can only undergo one oxidation to get up to um, this type of carbonyl, which is going to be a ketone. So a ketone is a carbonyl with two different uh, organic substituents. And then tertiary alcohols. So here's a tertiary alcohol. It's fully substituted. Tertiary alcohols cannot be oxidized. No oxidation, right? Because they don't have any of these of the hydrogens in that position. So there's, there's no way that they can undergo an oxidation of this type. Okay, so those are the three different categories. So really what we're dealing with is uh, considering the, the primary and the secondary alcohols. Okay, so <clears throat> how can we go about oxidizing an alcohol? Okay, well, uh, there's a lot of different reagents that will get this done. Um, we are going to uh, limit our discussion to um, just essentially just one um, or one class. Um, and the one that we're going to learn is something that's called PCC, which stands for uh, a rather long name. So it's pyridinium, pyridinium chlorochromate, chlorochromate. Okay, so that's a, a long name, um, but uh, <clears throat> it's, it's fairly straightforward in, in how this works. Now, the actual structure is a salt. So... Let's just quickly show the structure. So the pyridinium part, well, this is just pyridine and it's protonated. So that's pyridinium, okay? Protonated pyridine is pyridinium. And then the uh, chlorochromate, well, the, the chromate part um, stands for, um, a, a, it's, a, it's based on chromium and it's a, a, you know, it's an oxidized form so it's, it's a chromate, and then there's a chloro uh, substituent, so it's a chlorochromate, and this is an, an anionic species. So this whole thing is a salt, and that equals PCC, okay? So PCC is uh, 
uh, it's a fairly useful reagent because it's um, soluble in organic uh, solvents um, and it tends to be fairly general uh, for uh, both primary and secondary alcohols. So let me give you just a quick example of what this type of reaction would look like. So here's an alcohol um, and I can throw in some PCC and I'm going to do this in a in a solvent, so methylene chloride, uh, and that's going to dissolve both my alcohol and the PCC reagent. And when I do that, I will get the oxidation product, which in this case is an aldehyde, since I put in a primary alcohol. Okay. <clears throat> okay. So uh, there's an important point when we're dealing with primary alcohols, okay, primary alcohols, which is that uh, they need to uh, be in organic solvents, organic solvents, okay? So a lot of oxidations will work in aqueous solvents, um, but that's going to be a problem, so water, uh, but that's going to be a problem because if I um, take a primary alcohol and I throw in my PCC, um, but I have water around, what will initially happen is that I'll oxidize to the aldehyde, okay? But then this can actually undergo a process, which we're gonna learn about in a later unit, um, but we need to mention it now, which is that they can react with water. And it's a reversible process, but they can actually access this type of intermediate, which is called a hydrate okay um, and so so you can see that the water has added across the uh, the carbonyl the CO double bond and now um, this pretty much looks like it has two alcohol functionalities right and that's exactly what the PCC will see okay it will see that there's an alcohol and so it will oxidize and actually take that all the way up to the carboxylic acid so this is important if you want to take a primary alcohol and oxidize it up to the carboxylic acid, it's actually really easy to do. You just use PCC with water. But if you want to stop at the aldehyde, you have to do PCC in methylene chloride and no water. All right. So you stop at the aldehyde stage. All right. So secondary alcohols, um, as we just talked about, um, don't suffer from that problem. Um, because there is no potential for overoxidation, so we don't have to worry about it. Okay, so we can talk about the mechanism of how PCC does an oxidation of an alcohol. Okay, so we can draw out our alcohol, put in the lone pair here, and then the structure of the chromium looks like this. So there's a chromium with two double bonded oxygens, uh, there's a chloride substituent, and then here is our O minus. And so remember that the, the counter ion here is just this protonated pyridinium. Okay, so that's the counter ion, and we're really not going to use that in this mechanism. Okay, so what we're going to do is to use the um, the hydroxyl group of the alcohol uh, to attack the chromium, which is very electron deficient because it has all these electronegative atoms around it. And we're basically going to displace the chloride. Okay, so when that happens, we will end up with the chromium attached to our alcohol. So O minus, okay, and then I've got a positive charge there. And so uh, what, what's going to happen is that this is going to get deprotonated, and then this oxygen here is going to get protonated. Um, but rather than draw out those two steps, I'm, I'm just going to say proton transfer uh, just to make life a little bit easier. And because the, the exact details of how a proton gets removed and added aren't terribly important to us. Okay, so if I do a proton transfer, what I'm left with is this species. Okay, so this is a chromate ester. Okay, it's, uh, it's the uh, ester of an alcohol with um, chromic acid, basically. So it's a chromate ester, all right? 
Now, the nature of this is that uh, the chromium is attached to a bunch of uh, substituents that make it very electron deficient. So it's actually uh, uh, quite highly oxidized and it would like to get some more electrons basically. And so the way that it can do that is to sort of steal them from the alcohol. So the way that this works, we're going to engage those CH bonds, one of those CH bonds um, on that carbon. So here we need just a very weak base. It doesn't take much. We can just use the chloride. So that's going to pluck off one of those protons. And then we're going to use the electrons from that CH bond, kick them in, and then that actually will expel the CrO3H. Okay, so that's being kicked off. And then what we're left with here, right, you can see that we've just oxidized our alcohol up to the aldehyde. And then what got kicked off was this species. Okay. <clears throat> Which if you're uh, counting uh, charges here, this had to be this has to be negative. And then we also have some HCl left over. Okay. So this thing went away with the pair of electrons, okay? So what that means is that this thing got reduced. The chromium got reduced here. Um, and that had to be the case because every oxidation needs a reduction. So we oxidize our alcohol to the aldehyde and we reduced our chromium um, to, to this species. So if you um, look at this, you, you might actually recognize a, a similarity here uh, in this step where we pull off a proton, electrons dump down, and then we spit off something else. And it turns out that this is actually uh, very analogous to an E2 elimination to form an alkene, where we have some base, pull off a proton, electrons dump down, and kick off a good leaving group, okay, to form a carbon-carbon double bond. That's exactly what we did here, except we're forming a carbon-oxygen double bond and the leaving group was this chromium species. So that's basically what uh, the oxidation of an alcohol looks like. Okay, like I said, there's a lot of different oxidants that are known and they all have their uses. We're gonna stick with PCC, but there is one other one that we need to talk about. Um, and this comes down to an issue of selectivity. So this is manganese, manganese dioxide. Okay. Uh, and this one is, is useful because it is uh, very selective for um, very activated alcohols, um, by which I mean uh, either allylic or benzylic alcohols. Okay. So uh, basically the reasoning behind this is manganese dioxide is actually a really poor oxidant. It's not very reactive. So it's going to need an alcohol that's uh, very prone to oxidation. And that basically comes down to allylic or, or benzylic uh, types of alcohols. So I can show you an example here where this selectivity comes in handy. So here's a substrate, a starting material where uh, it has two different alcohols in it. One of them is allylic. This one right here is allylic. When this one is just a normal uh, alcohol. So if I treat this with mangane manganese dioxide and it, this can be a big excess of manganese dioxide. I don't need one equivalent. It can be 10 equivalents. Um, what I will get out of this is the product whereby only the allylic alcohol was oxidized. It won't touch the one that uh, isn't allylic. So that you can see that's a, actually a very useful bit of selectivity. So that's the only product, okay? And then I can also show you an example of a benzylic type of alcohol. So here's an aromatic ring. Um, and uh, so here's, here's one alcohol and you can see that that's, that's not benzylic. So there's, there's two carbons there, so that's not benzylic. Um, but here is an example where that is benzylic. So that's a benzylic alcohol because it's on the position that's next to the aromatic ring. So again, I can treat this with a, a great excess of um, manganese dioxide um, and because of this selectivity, it will only touch the benzylic alcohol. So I'll get my aldehyde there, but the other alcohol 
won't be touched. Okay, so this is the only product in this case too. Okay, so that's, that's basically uh, the um, oxidation of alcohols.